Good day fellow investors. Chinese stocks have been crashing lately, but let's put things into perspective. In this video, we will compare the current Chinese stock market crash with the previous Chinese stock market crash that wasn't that long ago. We're going to discuss how I believe that trade war fears are a little bit exaggerated and it's just a me big media blow up because the media has to talk about something. We're going to discuss Chinese economic growth, Chinese economic growth forecast, Chinese economic growth facts and then compare it to the market sentiment, how the market goes about investing in China. Because the, in the current market, it's firstly about sentiment and not underperforming somebody else. So you have to do what everybody else is doing. When you put that into perspective, you will understand why we'll also discuss the forecast for China and what's the key growth power there. When you compare all of that, you will see that China has to be a part of your portfolio. And that will be the last thing that we will discuss how to make Chinese stocks a part of your portfolio, how to go about the investing strategy when it comes to investing in China. Let's start. As said, Chinese stocks are getting hammered out there. The Chinese stock market index is down almost 20% for the year. Perhaps it will be even more as this video gets published. The iShares China ETF has also fallen 50% over the year and especially has been falling very fastly lately since Jack Ma resigned. And what happens when stocks become cheaper? People start selling. Look at the net capital flows to emerging markets. 2015, 2016, the previous stock market crash in China. First, 2014, there was a bubble. And you can see in 2014, big inflows, if we start with the left part of the chart, big inflows into stocks in China because stocks prices were going up. As soon as that changed, as stocks were entering a bear market in China 2014, 15, 16. You can see big, huge outflows of money from China because are you crazy to buy something that's falling in price? 2016 still declining. And then in 2017, the market changed a little bit its sentiment about China, but then things really exploded only in 2018 up till a few months ago when there was again look at the last data point huge outflow led from china and nobody wants to buy chinese stock stocks and that's why you see the big big decline declines in stock prices and stocks in china you can see the huge decline in 2015 going into 2016 slowly going up ra rising 2016 17 and then again a crash since january What's worth notifying is that it takes a very short time for stocks to crash, then a long time for stocks to recover that ground, and then again a short time to crash. And there are several reasons for that. The first reason is the market is driven by sentiment. If I would be a normal investment manager of a fund from some big company, something where I actively manage funds, and okay, I say Chinese stocks are cheap, but Chinese stocks have fallen 20% over the last six months, which means that if I put my money now into Chinese stocks, those might fall another 10, 20%. And that's something not possible for my fund. If we invest and then it drops 10, 20%, we would underperform all other funds that are sticking their guns to the S&P 500, which means that the clients that have trusted us with their money would pull the money out from our fund because we have performed worse than the S&P 500 funds. And that means that you are not allowed as a fund manager to invest in something that is declining. You should always invest in something that is confirmed, less risk, uh, stock prices, rising stock prices, because that is something you can sell to the customer, because the customer is the eventual driver of what going, what's going on with management activity. Few value funds can do whatever they want and buy when there is value. And that's the key difference to understand in what's going on in the market and where's the value. In China now, and especially if stocks continue to fall, there will be more and more value. And we have to take advantage of that, but more about the strategy towards the end of this video. 
When the things are very positive, as said, 2014, in a bull market, everybody was rushing into China in fear of missing out on the upside. Similar things before January 2018, late part of 2017, rushing into all the Chinese stocks in fear of missing out. When the sentiment changes, big, big selling and nobody wants to buy. That's why you see the big, fast stock market drops. But let's talk about trade wars. I firmly believe that those, are, those fears are exaggerated. These are just analyst estimates and for 2018, the earnings per share for China has been adjusted from 7.1 Hong Kong dollars to the current 6.6 .6 since July, since you have seen the biggest drops. However, compare those earnings with the average over 2013 to 17, and you can see that it's not worse. On the contrary, it's much better than what has been the case in the last years. So earnings are still positive, still good, still better than those were in the past. So the fundamentals are relatively stable and just small changes in the fundamentals don't justify all the stock price declines. Some stock price declines of overvalued growth stocks, yes, but not all stock price declines, so declines which makes some Chinese companies an opportunity. If you read the specific Bloomberg article from where I got this picture, this situation is terrible. Earnings are declining and corporations have it tough. War victims, uh, trade war escalation, whatever, a terrible, terrible situation that leads to more clicks. But is this article well-founded of fundamentals? Does this article give a long-term perspective on investing? Of course not. However, if you compare to things to the S&P 500, where earnings continue to march on, where everything is done that stocks push higher, no matter the debt, no matter anything, then of course China is a big, big mess, a big crisis. And it's up to you whether you want to invest there and take the opportunity or not. Stick to the S&P 500 because that's the s smallest risk, lowest risk investment out there, at least according to the market. See ya in five to 10 years. If we look at the Chinese economy, looking at the market, it must be entering a recession. And that is exactly the case. The new economic recession definition is that if your growth has been above 6.8% and is now 6.7% annualized in the last quarter, your economy is in a recession. Of course, I'm joke joking, but I allow for some irony. So China is growing at 6.7%, the long-term estimates are 5%, so this 6.7, when you put it in the long-term, is a positive surprise. There be the data, China and everything, take it with a grain of salt, but if it is 6, 5, 4, it's still big, it's still sustainable, it still leads to development, growth, better earnings, better businesses, and a better future for China. So string st still strong economic fundamentals and strong business fundamentals from the earnings. However, the market sentiment looks like this. China stocks near 2016 low have Asia markets on knife edge. It's terrible, it's destroyed. Again, another Bloomberg article. If you read through the article, the core is that if the market falls through the 2014 support, that's another negative signal. And to quote, any further decline in that stock market gives it an important lower low and would be quite negative. The whole article, no mention about fundamentals. It's only about what's going on in the market and most investors see only the market as getting signals for their market decision-making, for their buying and selling. Everybody is waiting for practically everybody else to start buying. And when that happens, nobody's buying, they are just selling because if you hold, you will underperform the S&P 500 that's going up, clients will pull their money, you're even forced to sell, and that's why you have the negative situation on the market but still okay, relatively positive situation within the fundamentals. When these discrepancies arise, my big opportunity sound signs, my big opportunity bell rings. So let's talk a little bit more about the fundamentals and what's the key factor to understand when investing for the long term in China. If we look at Ray Dalio's How the Economic Machine Works article in, you can read it on Bridgewater, on their webpage, 
you can see that the key for economic growth is productivity. That can be brought higher with more debt or lower with the leveraging. Indebtedness, however, accounts only for 34% of long-term economic growth and productivity growth accounts for 65% of that growth. They have tested the models uh, for the last 100 something years on a 10 year forecasting basis and it returns a correlation of 84% between economic growth and the principles of productivity and debt. If we look at Bridgewater's estimations on future growth, which will be the best countries for future growth, of course, first India, as it has a lower starting base, and then China. Real GDP growth is expected to be at 5%, add inflation, that's what, 6, 7%. Those are staggering numbers. The United States is at 1.8, 2.2% over the long term. So if now it's at 3, it will be at 1 somewhere in the future because it's all based on productivity. Italy, terrible situation, Greece, Japan, of course. So these are the tailwinds you have to be exposed to and this is the main reason why you should have portfolio exposure to Chinese stocks. China is not expected to grow at 10% as it has been the case in the past, but 5, 6, 7%, 5% a healthy growth rate over the long term is sufficient to lead to a more economic growth, a better time in China and good investment returns. A nice example of this long-term story comes from Boeing. They recently increased their forecast for new airplane demand in China. They have increased it 6.3% over their 2000... That's a jet. They have increased it 6.3% over their 2016 forecast. So they see long-term economics, growth, 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 and even bigger growth. 7,200 new airplanes will be added from China in the next 20 years. And businesses simply continue to do businesses. Alibaba, Russia, they invested in Turkey. They are growing, growing, doing their own business no matter what Trump says or does. So what's my stock market forecast for the Chinese stock market? Well, I think that tomorrow Chinese people will get up in the morning, will eat their rice, will go to school, will turn on the light, will perhaps buy my book that's being translated into Chinese. You can check it on Amazon or wait for the publication in China. It will be even a bit cheaper if you love reading in Chinese. So life will go on in China and it will grow, they are ambitious, they are studying, they have great uh, education results, they, their PISA results are th among the best in the world alongside Singapore, Korea, I think. So life will go on in China, life will get better in China, life will develop in China. It won't be linear, there will be ups and downs as there is with any uh, economy, but if you find the good businesses in China, there are there is everything in China, it's a economy developing fast so a lot of things there but if you find the good businesses if you diversify over five good businesses and if you are ready to accept the volatility of the market and take that volatility as your advantage then you can invest in China so let's discuss a little bit more about the strategy you know okay China will grow at five percent India is difficult to invest but if you can find the exposure there perfect we'll discuss that in future videos we are focusing now this month on China so if you can invest in China it is a big country still not so developed so a lot of growth coming in front of it in the next 10-15 years China one road one belt a lot of plans a strong economy a proactive political system that intervenes before there is a problem a domestic currency domestic debt so there are risks and you can check my video on risks it will be also in the end screen but when you put that into perspective how much should you have of your, your portfolio exposed to china there are different ways but uh, you can expo be exposed through commodities through different technologies through developed market companies that are investing big heavily in China like Starbucks so you think okay when you look at your portfolio I think that 
Direct exposure should be around 10, 15%, 8, 10, 15%. And then big bulk exposure, even Apple has what? A lot of sales from China. So at least 20% of your exposure. And then when you put that, those things into perspective, then you see, okay, how to play this. When China is cheaper, you buy more. If the portfolio exposure drops from 20 to 15, you raise it to 20. When if it drops again to 15, which means it already fell 50%, you simply raise it again to 20. Then you let it grow to 30% when there is a bull market. And then, then you drop it to 20 and you compare it to other opportunities in your diversified portfolio. You have to take your the volatility as your friend on individual stocks i've started covering a company i think three four months ago and i immediately put four buying ranges for the company the fourth buying range was at 25 percent of the current trading price and the stock now during to due to the turmoil in china is close to that fourth buying range when i will buy more but when i bought it first the first time the stock I had already in mind, okay, what if the stock drops 80%, what would I do? And that is what is happening. So keep that in mind, take advantage of the volatility. Have a strategy that you can take advantage of the volatility in China. That's the key. However, you have to think ahead about it. Okay, don't think this stock is now so cheap it can't go lower. I have seen so many people make that mistake, that's incredible. You don't have to think about fundamentals. You have to buy on fundamentals, but don't think that the fundamentals will give protection for a stock in China. It's all about market sentiment. If Chinese stocks go down, all those funds are forced to sell to avoid underperforming or to avoid the bad performance. And then the fundamentals don't matter. So don't think that a stock that is already cheap can go cheaper. That's the first thing. The second thing is always be ready to buy in stages and be happy if the stocks goes down more, if the stock go da goes down more. But for that, you have to think about it ahead. Put your buying ranges. If the stock goes 80% down, 70% down, what do I do? So it's impossible to predict how low will a stock go because it's impossible to predict well, what will Trump do, say or tweet. Not even Trump knows what he will tweet tomorrow. So that's an impossible mission. So think about the fundamentals and just adjust your buying strategy into stages so that you can take advantage of whatever will happen so that you can take advantage of the volatility. That's the key. So to conclude, China will grow, will continue to grow, will be the most powerful economic country in the world soon. I think that portfolio exposure up to 20% is not bad. If you can put it into the right perspective and accept the volatility, have volatility as your friend and then do proper due diligence, proper diversification so that whatever happens with your five to 10 stocks, you end up well. And that's the key because you, are should, you should not risk too much where there is so much risk. If you like this video, if you like Chinese stocks, please subscribe. We already have, I think, five, six videos about Chinese stocks. There will be plenty more. JD is coming as it's the next thing that I will work an in-depth analysis of JD.com. What are the risk rewards and what might be the best investing strategy as it was the stock that you required the most. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, like the video, comment the video, and I'll see you in the next video tomorrow.